Okay, so what I want to do, I have 278 and 3 8 <clears throat> outside of that wall to outside of that wall. 278, 6, so 3 8 is 6 16. I always cut just a, just a little less. 278, 5. Always double check yourself twice. Okay, we are square and we are square. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I gotta say, I'm not feeling that great today. I had my first colonoscopy yesterday. Thought I'd share that all with you. At 45 is the new 50, as they say. Anyway, in this video, yeah, didn't expect that as an intro. In this video, we're gonna get into the framing of the floor system that goes above where I'm standing. This is actually going to support our garage slab, two car garage. So the main beam running through the center and I'm gonna follow this up with its own video. This video is specifically about installing the eye joists, how to cut them efficiently, etc. So I'm cutting it with this LVL on edge because I have to lay out both sides for hangers. I think it'll make sense as we go. All right, so my layout starts from there, 12 inch on center and my joists are inch and three quarters. I'm just gonna verify this. I didn't mess that up. Since I'm on a two by six wall, I'm gonna go ahead and mark, mark that so that I pull my layout from the inside edge of the wall. So 12 inch on center is 12 to the center. Seven eighths each way represents my, <coughs> represents the flanges on my joist, inch and three quarter. I'm gonna mark that guy. I'll get a few of these shot on, um, Kyle, just so that I have the footage. And then I can turn you guys loose, as it's good practice. Okay, make sure I did that right. 12 from the edge to the center, minus half the flange, inch and three quarters. And I'm just gonna verify. 12 to the center. <coughs> Okay. Yeah, that end was pretty square, which is kind of nice. So I'm gonna go one foot and one foot, one and three quarters, two foot, two foot, one and three quarters, three foot, etc., etc. Man, that's a lot of joists, man. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of wood in these walls, huh? Yeah. But, you know, if you're looking at it from the perspective of, it is a lot of wood, <laughs> but, oops, but you're getting the, uh, all the living space below a slab, you don't normally get that. Whether it's <clears throat> storage or whatever. <coughs> yeah, right, because it would vibrate up through the slab. Maybe it wouldn't be as loud upstairs. <coughs> okay, so this last one, I'm thinking we may need to shift because <coughs> if our wall is five and a half, then there's the amount of room for insulation. I was just thinking about layout. Since it bears here, I kind of think if I go six inches back, it's easier to get insulation in there. You know, because our wall's five and a half. Um, let me think about that for a second. Okay, so two will sit on that top wall. Then I'm definitely going to go, I'm going to go a foot back, which would be about, yeah, I'm going to go six back. An inch and three quarters. Cross those out. There's just more to it than just framing. You know, I'm pulling layout for joists. My, my primary concern right now is structure, but I also have to be thinking about future trades like insulation. There's just certain times where there might be things we have to leave out to make it easier for insulation. Um, if you bring the plan over here, I'll show you. I might have swapped it out for some different, for the hanger specified. <coughs> So, we're in the gizzle rod. Yeah. So we're looking at this column. Uh -huh. 
I gotta get some lead. I don't see any kind of a column cap mentioned. So he shows these hangers, if it was two by 12. Where would, um, what would it say if it was a column cap? Would it just say CC? Depending, yeah, CC for column cap, but probably ECCQ, which means SDS screws. Okay. Um, what I'm wondering, see how the back here, I just don't remember what I did. See the back says PZ4C and then post cap. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four. Let me just look at my list. Because, yeah, when we did inventory, it's not on the list. Because I had the list. And that was the day that they sent them out to us. Yeah, we want the PCZ. There should only be one of them. PCZ? Yeah, PCZ. Yeah, you know me. You down with PCZ? PCZ? Yeah, you know me. All the homies. Oh, the homies. Let's see, that didn't look very straight. All right. We're getting there, we're getting there. All right, so. Do we have another box of these hangers? Okay. And I've got some at home for where we made that one change. So for this wall, I just need, or this section, I just need three. Okay, so as you can see, we're gonna install all of our joist hangers on our LVL before we raise it into place because it's a lot easier on the body and it's a lot faster. I've laid out 12 inches to the center, minus half the uh, joist, plus half the joist, scribe parallel lines all the way down. How do we keep these things installed properly? They are top flange hangers, so we want this seated nice and tight. Notice that the seat itself is just a little bit bigger than the joist. That's to make it easier to install. Also notice these tabs. That means that we don't need any fasteners in the side. At least in this case, there could be cases where you need them. So here's how you install them. If we were to do this, the seat moves up. Obviously we can't even get a joist in there if it's like that. So we really wanna make sure that these stay nice and parallel. I like to hold it like this where I can see my lines, and I'm gonna shoot here first because I want this to be nice and tight. That's gonna help us with our height. So see how I've got the line there? If it moves off just a hair, it's not a big deal. Then I'm gonna install the nail there and tap it. It's just, just, can be nice and tight, okay? Just do a few repetitively. I'm gonna go. Of course. Typical, typical. Do I have an extra? I'll shoot one more on, Kyle, and then I'll show you. I'll give you this guy. I'll shoot one more on, then I'll show you how I do it. And if you want to go through and blast them. Too many people think that they don't have the time to train. But the few seconds or minutes it takes to train, we make back later. Because we want consistent results. I'm not going to insist that it has to be done exactly my way. But at least if we all started on the same page, we're going to get similar results, even if we tweak the individual way that we do things. All right. All right, Kyle, let me show you how I do it. And Noah, you might as well watch too, even though you've done it. Hey, nice golf ball. Well, yeah. Huh. I don't know why that's not wanting to go in. There we go. Okay, so here's how I do it. Is I hold everything on the side so that my hand's out of the way. 
And I always go this side first because I'm right-handed. It might be easier for you. Top so it's tight. Then that guy, now it's done. And then I just hold it so it's nice and parallel. And that's it. And I don't know if you want to adjust the depth. It is LVL. Sometimes it'll... Okay, so I'm gonna let that guy run. That way it time lapses. And I'm gonna... So what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna get all these shot on and then I think we'll set it. Okay. Yeah, and it's just the top holes. It, it's a little finicky sometimes. And then, I, so the only thing about that is you kind of have to be careful because we want to shoot the tops down first. So I always hold it here and then I can eyeball. Without, yeah. And then you can see if it, and I kind of angle away so it doesn't slip toward. Um, okay, I gotta use the bathroom. So what we're gonna do, Noah, is we're gonna end up setting this. Okay. And then we're gonna ditch side? the truss jib. Hangers on both sides or just the side? I'm sorry? Hangers on both sides. Hangers on both sides, baby. So we're gonna yeah, and you'll figure out your rhythm, Kyle. I don't wanna, you know, be that guy. I wanna be that other guy. So, we'll end up lifting this, twisting it, dropping it. Okay. Just twist, drop. Smack it up, flip it, rub it down. <laughs> that girl's poison. I you were <laughs> <laughs> I was like... Then we'll ditch the truss jib. Then what we're going to do is we're going to grab that whole pile of 12-footers that's bundled. Okay. We're going to leave it bundled, but tear the wrapper off. And then... That's oh. where we're going to chainsaw everything. So I think you get the point. I want to provide the training, show them the way that works best for me, but then not insist that it has to be exactly that way. My main goal is that now they know how to install them, but also figure out their own body mechanics. The biggest thing is we just want consistent results. And if those hangers are parallel and they're nice and tight on the top flange, then they're gonna be nice and consistent. As I always say, consistent is as consistent does. Uh, Forrest Gump paraphrased that in that one movie. <laughs> These were just a windy couple of days, and I was still getting over the residual effects of COVID, and I had that dry cough. Didn't prevent my sweet moves from making it to the... <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, what do you say? What do you say? Okay, so this is how we got the beam down in there. Now it's gonna be how we're gonna raise the beam. Look at all those hangers, right? 12 inch on center. We're gonna have a center column down to that big pier pad that you saw before. That's gonna support the garage slab plus two vehicles, right? Plus a safety factor. We're not gonna lift this beam. I haven't looked up how much it weighs, but it is definitely worth taking the time. I, somebody here on YouTube recently made the comment that forklifts are too expensive. I would argue pretty vociferously, we've been running forklifts since 2002, I think it was, spring of 2002. It is too expensive not to be using a machine. And this little machine, we only paid like 30 grand for it, way back in 2003. Okay, Simpson Strong Tie SDWC. These are the truss screws. The angle Kyle has them at. In this case, we don't really need it for uplift, but that so angle was too shallow. That. It needed to be steeper relative to vertical. Anyway, you could look that up Before if you I use those. Cut. Now, for the main, the main attraction. This is the Bigfoot Head Cutter XL. It clamps on, or you see it just kind of bolts. Tighten that bolt nice and tight. And we're gonna gang cut these eye joists. This came bundled. You can see it. We haven't even taken the wrapper off. So I'm gonna go ahead and true up this side by using my T-square. Then I tack the uh, guide down. Now, what I should have done is I should have taken like two inches off of the joist because then the bar won't wander. As it was, it you can see how the pile itself, yeah, right there. Now we're cutting some off. This is what is called registering the end. It is much quicker, it takes about three minutes to so do I this, mark the end than trying so to square up the other side. Align the uh, saw to. So as I rudely interrupted myself, I draw a square line on the eye joist or whatever the material is, and I set the saw to that. I just eyeball the end, it's a chisel tooth chain, so it cuts very clean, very sharp, and I set that so that the side of that tooth is right up against the line evenly. I'm gonna 
mark that side. All right, nine and a quarter. Nine and a quarter. Now here is a pro tip before you bolt the head cutter onto the chainsaw. Start and run the chainsaw so it's nice and warmed up, and that way with the extra weight on it, you're not sitting there and yanking on that starter cord. This is in real time. This is how fast it cuts through eye joists. You know, it's gonna be a little slower, right, if it's two by 12. So these are Roseburg inch and three quarter by 11 and seven eighths eye joists. These were all 12 footers that came banded, as you can see. There's nothing we needed to do except pick them up, register one end by drawing square with the T-square, then pulling our measurement parallel, setting the base plate, and then adjusting the guide off of our line so that we cut right up at the line. You want the chain or the uh, bar to just be leaning slightly. That helps it to stay straight. 48 rafters in less than 10 minutes, and that included setting up cameras. If I did this by myself with no cameras, it just goes so fast. I mean, you can see that, right? Two cuts, two cuts total. So instead of handling 48 pieces and measuring 48 times and squaring 48 times. Anyway, so now that the wrapper's pulled off, those are Bronco, um, I, they're not saw horses. Our original set of Broncos, which finally broke last year doing foundation work. Um, 1997, I think is when we bought them. This pair we bought a couple years back. I highly recommend those Bronco stands. They extend up to about six feet. 24 foot plank, this just, I know that there's a bunch of people that just keep talking about machismo, and yeah, it was super cool back in the day when all the framers were three stories high, walking backwards, laying out two, two by four walls. Yeah, most of those guys, well, they're, they're pretty beat up. So let's work smarter, not harder. In the few seconds it takes to set the plank on here, not only are we safer, but we actually are a little bit faster. So that's, that's what I'm saying. Now, that last joist got put in not right, got put in on layout on the far side, but remember we shifted our um, layout so that we could get insulation in. Doesn't matter, Kyle figured it out the next day, fixed it, just a couple nails to pull. Are you really even framing if you're not pulling nails? <laughs> now in this case, Noah can stay in the machine and Kyle can just pull them off by himself. So again, it is too expensive not to have a machine. That's just my opinion, and this little machine has just been pretty bulletproof for us all these years. I put a fair amount of money into it this time last year because the cylinders were just leaking hydraulic fluid. But man, it's a 1998 machine. So it made it from that to 2022, spring of 2022 before the major repairs. Totally worth it. All right, everybody, thank you for watching. We're gonna just keep rolling through this floor.